Welcome back, everybody. It is Hawk Talk on Melrose. A day late. Uh, someone here got a little sick yesterday, so couldn't record one yesterday. We probably could, but we want to be 100% when we do this stuff. Uh, got Tyler joined, as always. What's going on, man? What's going on, C? Uh, now, the viewers at this point are probably thinking I'm the one that was sick. Uh, but actually, it's... The guy, it was I. It was I. It was it was Colin who hasn't been sick in what seems like ten years. So it's what? How you doing? Is the real question. I, I'm doing better. Yeah, I rarely get sick. Um, knock on wood, it doesn't happen for a while. And it it happened on August second, which I was thinking in the back of my mind yesterday. I was like, good thing this didn't happen a month from now because a month from now, from yesterday, was the first Iowa game. So I was like, oh, thank God, you know, let's get it over and done with. But it lasted for like 24 hours. I'm good now. I'm um, still feeling a little like not quite 100 percent, but another good night of sleep, and I I should be good. Thanks for asking. Yeah, you got to make sure that chicken's all the way cooked through there. See. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what <laughs> happened. I, I, I it could have been food. Could have been food poisoning. I don't know. Uh, we'll leave that up to. I guess I don't know. Yeah, but uh. Yeah, just glad you're feeling better. And yeah, we just obviously wanted to wait, and make sure you're feeling 100 percent in that way yeah we can't we can't have a podcast bad, yeah yeah we can't well, have a bad hey, episode for those for the viewers everyone goes on the injury report once in a while so yep, it, exactly you were due and and um, you know hopefully that's the that's it for the season yep for sure and can you believe it though that yesterday if we would have recorded yesterday uh we would have been a month out from iowa football which means now since we are recording this on august 3rd uh we are less than a month out uh can't believe that uh, it is quickly approaching. Yeah, it's it'll be here. I mean, it's it's basically here. Like, I at this point when we're when we've got our weekly pods going now, it's like it's it, it's here. It's just like it's already here in my opinion. Yep. Um, and then actually tonight we're rec- this will be coming out Friday. Tonight we have preseason NFL football too. Let's so, go. Which is which let's is go. crazy to think about. I feel like yep. it's not talked about enough, and maybe it's because. You know, that Hall of Fame game, it, it ends up not being a great game because one, yeah, you know, no, the, starters, the play. starters don't play. Right. But I think, listen, I mean, if you told me like there's a preseason NFL game on tonight, I'd be like, wait, what? So we're here. We're we're almost in full swing with football. So yep. I'm pumped. I saw a tweet today where um, it said starting today, um, there'll be football every week until February. And that's just awesome to hear. Um, wow. And I get it. It's preseason, but it's still football. So I will take anything and everything. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so yesterday I was started fall camp and uh, you know, that will be, you know, fall camp will last like three weeks up until uh, school starts and then they'll get back into like the fall practice. And then uh, uh, September 2nd will be here. Biggest thing for me going into fall camp is I just hope we say injury free. You know, you're going to have some injuries, but hopefully the injuries are very minor. Uh, I think something we didn't touch on last week that I I think I saw like after we recorded was Kirk did say at Big Ten Media Days that um, going into fall camp, he d- he knows of nobody that is hurt. And I think probably what he refers by that is like in the two deeps, which I think it's huge because you go back the last couple of years, it always seems like we go into fall camp a little banged up. And so for him saying that um, and kind of what he said was like, a lot of guys actually sat out in spring ball, which looking back at the time, it's like, yeah, it does kind of suck that they're not playing, but I think it's kind of almost like a blessing in disguise. Let's get them a hundred percent healthy and ready to go for fall camp. And so here, hearing him say that makes me feel pretty good, but we still got to stay healthy these next couple of weeks. Um, I would hate to see um, an injury at, at really any position because it just makes everything, you know, there's always guys that can come in and step up, but it does suck. Yeah, and I, like you said, I feel like the last couple of years we've been kind of bitten by that early, and yep. it trickles into that early part of the season, and it just doesn't feel like – well, one, I feel like, you know, I'm talking specifically last year, it's like our offense already wasn't good, and now you take into account starters that are injured and can't play. So I just I, – I don't want that to kind of become the trend again this year. I, I Like you said, I'm hoping everyone stays – like injury free obviously you know guys are never 100 percent healthy that's kind of a given in football but yeah you know making sure that they're available come week one i think is going to be important and so 
navigating that's obviously tough because injuries i mean you like go on twitter and look at the nfl right now and you you see all these guys getting carted off the field left and yeah, right. yeah it knock sucks on wood right now right knock on wood like that's just the type of thing you can never predict but you know obviously trying to limit that as much as possible you know is going to be probably key and so i don't know if that means you know not going as hard i yeah i don't know the answer to it but that's going to be a big key early on, I think, for Iowa because I we want everyone healthy and to develop that chemistry as early as possible, especially with all these new guys coming in. So, yep, exactly. And you, yeah, you go back to like last year, uh, two guys in particular that uh, got hurt during fall camp was Nico, and he was out the first like four games, which sucked considering that you know um, Keegan. Well, Keegan Johnson, I mean, he got hurt. Granted, his was like lingering all off season, and then he barely played in fall camp. And then obviously we know the story there. Uh, And another player who was having a really good fall camp was Deontay Vines. And then he gets hurt and he's out for half the season. So it shows that it can happen at any point and it can really, especially at a position group. I I mean, I can receivers for me, it'd be like secondary. All it takes is one injury and it starts getting very thin. And so um, I just pray that um, fall camp is good and, September 2nd, we are 100% healthy. We're not going to be 100% healthy, but hopefully our, our two deeps, our starting positions are at least um, able to play and not injury injured or whatever. So, yeah. But yeah, like you said, you know, we didn't really touch on it, and, but it is kind of big news that like so far, knock on wood, it sounds like, you know, Kirk has, you know, is, is saying that everyone's relatively healthy, which is obviously a good sign. Yeah, for sure. Um, and then just kind of talking a little bit about fall camp too. I guess for me, um, since we didn't talk about this last week, as we as we're entering fall camp, some players that I'm I'm really excited to kind of hear about as the next couple of weeks unfold, especially at media days uh, or the media day, which is next Friday, I think is what when they're having it, and then kids day, which is I think next Saturday. Um, for me, offensively, obviously Cade. Yeah, I mean that's that's an obvious. You want to see how how he's doing in this offense and how things are kind of progressing. Uh, but for me, like I'm, I make, I'm really intrigued by, okay, how is Caleb Brown going to fit in? Um, are we going to utilize him to the best of his ability and, and our ability? Um, I'm intrigued by the two new offensive linemen. Are, are they going to start? Are they not going to start? I mean, Kirk said there's eight or nine guys that are kind of buying for a starting job on the offensive line. So I'm intrigued there. Defensively for me, um, definitely Nick Jackson. See how you know he fits. Obviously, he was an all ACC linebacker, but that doesn't mean that he's just gonna naturally be able to just come into our system and be good on day one. I'm not saying I mean he probably will, because he seems like that type of player that will, but you just never know. So I'm intrigued by that. And then for me too, is just the the secondary outside of the starters, who is gonna step up and be that third corner for us? Um, because that's like I said, a position group where if someone gets hurt, it could be bad. But if if we hear nothing but good things about let's just say TJ Hall, then I'm feeling a little bit more confident. Like okay, if someone does get hurt, we at least have that person coming in. So, yeah, I mean, just kind of echo what you said. Obviously, the transfers, um, you know, are going to have a a big you know role coming into this this season. I think a lot of them will play and get a lot of playing time, as you mentioned. Um, and, and obviously, you know, we, we talk at nauseum about the offense, you know, you can literally go through any position group on offense and probably besides running back and be like, or tight end and be like, yeah, no, we, you know, obviously very intrigued wide receiver, quarterback, offensive line as a whole. Um, but then another, like you mentioned the secondary, I, someone that I'm like so pumped about, and I think it's cause you actually just sent me out on Twitter and I looked Xavier and Wampa being a full time oh, yeah. starter. Man, I, I so just, much I upside. Gonna, I think he's going to be an absolute stud. Obviously, highest rated player to come to Iowa. Is that true? Uh, under Phil, for Phil it, Parker for, for defense. Phil, yeah. yeah. Okay. I'm pretty sure. I'm almost, yeah. but I, didn't I don't have to go back and look. That. But yeah, I, I mean, I just think like he, in practice, he had gotten an interception, like a, a sick, like contested catch in midair. And he caught it for an interception. What? Also, what the hell? What kind of throw? Hopefully that wasn't Cade. I, I saw people like tweeting that. It's like, oh my I know. gosh, it's one throw. No, no I know. Also, and, you don't and, know if it was Cade or not. And really the throw wasn't that 
it was just a hell of a play by Xavier right. more than anything. Right. No, yeah, that's that is funny though. It's like, oh God, flashback, PTSD. No. Although um, they did put a video out today of Kate throwing it to Nico, which obviously that the the I mean he was wide open, but it was it was a great ball and it just shows Kate's quick release and um yeah. actually being able to accurately throw the ball to someone. I don't care how wide open you are. We couldn't we didn't even see that last year with Petrus. But sorry, I interrupted. It, no, it it is amazing what we take for granted from just the simple the simple things, right? Um, yeah. Hopefully, we can get back to that and not have to like worry about that type of stuff, <laughs> right? Like, yeah, I, exactly. I I want to worry about the you know the 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 forty yard touchdown pass that we didn't complete, not the screen pass that got you know dirted because our quarterback. I digress. Um, but but. Sorry. Uh, yeah, you're getting me off off topic here. Now I'm getting pissed off. So, um, hey, it happens. So, yeah. So just obviously, there's a lot to look forward to, and obviously, in fall camp, this is when you know obviously we're ramping it, we're ramping it up, and mm-hmm. you know obviously, I think there's going to be a lot of um, specific positions that are you know like you said open for for the taking, like offensive line, and you know our you know. Specifically, offensive line is going to be is going to be big because I do I do think you know there could be some mixing and matching depending on if you know people are struggling, which I hope isn't the case, but you never know. Um. Yeah. And and for me, like, and I, obviously, we probably won't know much until we get to the first game, but we might see videos, and like I said, maybe at the kids' day. But I'm I'm also intrigued too, just to see if our offense is actually a little bit different or at least right. more, because I don't think it's gonna be different, but from what like Kate has said, or some of the other players have said that uh, we're going to attack more, going to pass the ball more. And once again, we're, I'm going to take that as a grain of salt because we heard that last, well, we heard last year was more like, we're going to simplify the offense, which. And like, it was more the coaches than the players, if you think about it, too. Saying At that, least that's yeah. my opinion. Yeah. So I'm glad, yep. like you said, I'm glad it's coming from, like, the actual players this year. Yep. So back in spring, and, and I was actually going to save this for maybe a different day, but let's, it's going to be real quick. Back in the spring, Brian Ferentz had a quote that said, we're going to do the same thing we do. We're just going to do it better, which – I, to me at the time, everyone freaked out. I, I knew it was just like coach speak. Like, even if we are going to change things, like, why would you tell people that? Right. Like you're going to keep that all. So like, I, when people like people were freaking out about when he said that, I was just like, yeah, he, I mean, it is kind of coming off kind of douchey after such a bad season last year, but at the same time, why would, even if there were changes, why would he even share that type of stuff? Like you're not going to do, uh, but in the spring, uh, we a player quoted, I forgot what player, but it said he's I think it was Luke Lachey, maybe, but Luke Lachey also said this at the Big Ten Media. So I don't know if it was Luke Lachey, but it, someone said it looks different. We're doing things differently in the past game. And then at Big Ten Media Days, Luke Lachey quoted BF, which Brian Ferentz, BF has made a lot of good changes on the offense. And I've seen a lot of things I really like. Going out there, you can tell. I'm talking to Nico, who has been in the program for six years. We talk, and we're just like, dang, this is really good. He sees that, and that's really cool. So I don't know what that means. Uh, Once again, wait to see to believe it. But I do think now that we have the pieces in place, we should be able to tack down the field better. We should be able to throw the ball more. Like, we have the pieces. So uh, it's a wait and see game. Yeah. And kind of what I take from that maybe isn't so much and and maybe it is, but I, I doubt it. It's probably not going to be, you know, all new offensive plays or anything like that. I think it's just more the fact we're not going to be afraid to like, um, and again, I'm saying all this with optimism again, like last year. So I, I hope I'm not wrong when I say this, but yeah. I think it's going to be more just like, we're not going to be afraid to pass the ball. You know, we're not going to be afraid to, like you said, attack, attack downfield a little bit more. Yep. Take Try shots. Get back, you know? Yeah. Get back to like, I don't know, running an actual offense. Right. Like, and like what you said, so one dimensional and we weren't even good at that. So I just, I, it, you know, obviously I think it's more just getting back to Iowa football. Yep. And like you said, a couple of days ago when we were talking, I think maybe over Xbox, getting back to running the football. Good. Being able to effectively that, run the football. 
Iowa's identity or yep. what I, you know, supposedly is our identity is running the football, being physical on the offensive and defensive line, which defense never, never happened a problem with offensively. Yeah. We got to get back to, it all starts and ends there. It really yep. does. Like no matter if we got Cade and Caleb and all these guys, they're, you got to make to, for them to be effective. You've got to get back to running the ball. Caleb, you know, uh, I'm blanking out right now. Caleb Brown. Or, Caleb, Brown, or, or, or Caleb, Caleb Johnson. Johnson. Caleb Johnson. Sorry. Got to get back to, you know, making sure Caleb Johnson is effective, whether that's, I think also in the past game, we say it every year. We think that, you know, we should try to get your best players, the ball in different ways, but you know, getting him back to running the football is going to be imperative. Yep. Sorry. I, I think with Here's Caleb, like I think with Caleb um, for how shitty our offense was last year and for defenses, just knowing that we couldn't pass. So let's just stack the box for him to have over 700 yards was pretty impressive as a true freshman. And I think if the big 10 didn't have such many good running backs, I think Caleb Johnson's name would be talked about a lot more, but no one's really talking about him because there's so many better or not better, but there's so many good running backs in the big 10. I think he's a very underrated running back. I think our running running back group is very underrated. I love LaShawn Williams. I like Jasmine Patterson. I think they're both good backups. And yeah, like you said, get the run game going. It sets up the play action pass. It sets up just passing in general. Um, it keeps teams on their heels. What are they going to do? And uh, obviously, and you need to be able to, call plays good too like you 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 have to be consistent about it right like you get the run game going and then yeah attack like don't don't do things differently and sometimes like that's something with brian that i get kind of annoyed with is this play calling sometimes it's very head scratching and hopefully um we see improvement there but who knows so getting away from being predictable all the time too like obviously that's gonna be and that yeah going back to yeah play calling like that's one knock on brian like i i don't like brian i try to defend him at times um, especially this last year with how bad, you know, with Petrus and the offensive line. But yes, I, I 100% agree. His play calling at times is is very, very subpar. Um, all right, let's get into the Big Ten preview. Uh, that's what we, we were going to – we talked about that last week. We're going to do this week, just get it kind of over and done with as we are entering after this week, essentially uh, four more or three more weeks left until uh, college football um, after this week. So let's get right into it. Our over-unders for every Big Ten school. We'll talk just a little bit about some of the some of the like not so good teams we probably won't spend much time on, but maybe some of the the better teams we will. Uh, but let's get right into it. We'll start on the uh Big Ten East and we'll start with Michigan. Ten and a half was their win total. Tyler, do you have over under on that? I went over. Um I have them at eleven wins. Uh, so I do have them losing a game. Um, and specifically, I've got them losing, what is it here, week 11 on the road in Happy Valley against Penn State. At Penn State. Who I think, I mean, I just think that atmosphere and that environment um, could be, you know, if all things go accordingly, I, it could just be, you know, maybe the matchup of the year, really, in the Big Ten. That's going to be a hell of a game. Or, or, or a top two matchup, so. Yeah, yep. I, I think that's going to be just a, a crazy, crazy game. And I do have uh, Michigan dropping that one. So I, I actually – I have them going over as well, and I have them losing um, at Penn State. But um, looking at their schedule, it's just funny. Like, their first four games are such a joke. Oh. Um, they uh, So, yeah, real quick, uh, <laughs> me, and, me and you haven't looked at each other's um, – uh, over unders yet. So I don't know what you're saying and you're not knowing what I'm saying. That's number one. And then number two, real quick to, to kind of, you know, I don't know if you're going to say this and, and I think, I don't know if we talked about it or not, but Jim Harbaugh is obviously suspended for the first four games, man. They're sure going to miss him against Eastern Carolina, UNLV, yeah, Bowling, Bowling Green, Green and Rutgers. Yeah. Man. It's it absolute joke. They are the, did you, the did you know last year their, their non-conference is just, <laughs> It's worse. I mean, it's worse than Iowa. People get give shit about Iowa because they never play anyone. It's like, dude. Yeah, look Michigan at that schedule. Not, yeah, that's brutal. They're the only Big Ten school this year that doesn't play a non-conference Power Five team. 
So, yeah, that's um, that crazy. And their crossovers are not too difficult. They play at Nebraska, which might be a little difficult, uh, especially if Nebraska is like, you know, Matt Rule era. Like if they start, right. let's just say like three and one or something like that going to that game, like, the, you know, at Nebraska, it's going to be tough at Minnesota and then Purdue. Uh, but they do have to play at Penn State, and then they have to play at Michigan State, which is obviously a big rival to them. So, um, yeah. for me, with Michigan, obviously having JJ McCarthy having a really good run game, their defense is get, on paper probably better this year than they were last year, and their defense was still really good last year. Uh, for me, like looking, the only thing like for me that I'm like, and I and I think their two wide receivers are really good, and Cornelius Johnson and uh, Roman Wilson. But like, I just they don't have like that like true like legit because like Ronnie Bell's gone. They don't have that true legit legit wide receiver. That's the only thing that I would like say. But other than that, they are an absolute stack team. Yeah, they're they're deep. Um, maybe not so much at like you said. Maybe wide receiver is is one area. If you were to kind of nitpick and say, okay, what could bite them in a game, right or two? Yep. Um, and that, and that you make an excellent point. I mean, they, you know, it seems like uh, Ronnie Bell was there for like 10 years. I don't know. <laughs> so it's yeah. weird to see him gone. Him gone. And, yep. And he was, a, yeah. he was stud for them. He was, but you're right. They, they've got probably, uh, you know, probably on right now, preseason, probably the best quarterback in the big 10 coming back. And um, you know, that's, that, that's going to carry a lot of weight. So, uh, but I do think like, it's just hard to predict a team going and then Michigan, you know, is probably, you know, probably the on paper right now, the best team in the, in the big 10. It's just hard to predict them, you know, going 12 and 0. I know they went 12 and 0 last year. It's hard to repeat that, you know, yeah. they're going to get everyone's best shot. Um, so I, yeah, but I still, I'm going over. Um, and then Ohio state is next. Um, 10 and a half is their win total. I also have them going over. This was, <clears throat> this was tough for me. Um, you know, brand new quarterback coming in. Um, I, is his name Kyle McCord or something like that? I think. Well, it's either him or Devin Brown, and that's the problem okay. with me with this team. I mean, both are I think good right. quarterbacks, but like, right. who's going to be the quarterback? That's the question. And and that's that that is a real question. Um, you you know you know when you you get a guy like C.J. Stroud, who's you know by far and away you know one of the best quarterbacks in the country, let alone the Big Ten. You know, you really don't have to worry about your offense as much. And, and maybe you do have to worry about that a little bit this year. Obviously, yeah. wide receiver is goaded, you know, by <laughs> far the best receivers uh, top to bottom in the entire country. That's going to be scary. Um, and I think will their offense again is like they're they're going to have a really good quarterback in there. And, and to be able to throw it up to a guy like Marvin Harrison or a Mecca Buka uh, is, yeah. is really unfair. And I think we'll still get them to what I have is 11 wins um, with them losing for a third straight year to Michigan on the road. Yeah. It's that it's tough, tough. So I actually have them going under, um, I have them losing, even though, um, uh, I can't think of their coach right now. Uh, Ryan day, Ryan day. Um, I was having a brain fart. Um, he, his only two conference losses ever are the two Michigans. Like he beats like every other team, but I have yeah. them losing at home against Penn State. Cause I really like Penn State's roster. Um, and I have them losing at Michigan and I was really debating on putting a loss at Notre Dame. I just didn't know. I the, was too. The, 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 pro, the one thing is they're so good in non-conference. non-conference. Yep. The exactly. record is like insane the last, like how many years. So it I just, yep. You know, I, yeah. I just think like, and like even like at Wisconsin might be tough. I have that as a win, but that might be tough. Yeah. Problem with yeah. me with this team, the only thing that I'm really like kind of like, you know, is their offensive tackles. They're replacing both players. And in the spring game, they looked really bad there. And obviously that was a spring game and you're bringing in new, two new tackles, but they were trying to find a transfer and they, they missed out on like three different players that they were trying. I was reading something where they were trying to get. And so you have a new quarterback coming in with two offensive tackles that are brand new. Like that could spell some trouble. And like I said, their offense that day for the spring game was not very good. I went back and watched that game because I was wanting to watch Caleb Brown to see like his catches. And I just watched some of it. And I'm like, wow, this, and granted it was a spring game, but I'm just saying like it, it could have, 
maybe affect yeah. a little bit. So like, that's the reason why I have them going under uh, because they have a tough schedule. I, I don't care who they lose to. I mean, but playing at Notre Dame, Strength the schedule is four at Wisconsin. Yep. So yeah. uh, could be tough. Let's well, go to Pat or- real quick. And, and just to cap that off, it's like, their defense has always kind of been an issue, the last, especially the last couple of years. Now, I know they have a really good defensive coordinator. Uh, it'll be like his second year or whatever um, for like Oklahoma State. I can't remember his name, but um, he'll he'll be back and, and running that system again. So, you know, I don't know. Like, it always seems like their defense, you know, is suspect. And so that, yeah. They do have a tough schedule. So, that, I mean, yeah. like you said, it. I was I was debating on 10. It's just – it's Ohio State. I have to kind of see it to believe it yet. Um, so, yeah. It's hey, that, that first game might be tricky at Indiana. I mean, it, they're going to win that game. But, you know, going on the road right. first game of the year could be – with a new yeah. quarterback could be a little tricky. Um, especially because – Yeah, because, I mean, think about Indiana. They get a whole month practically to prepare for Ohio State in fall camp. So That might be the best Indiana looks for a while. You it, know, like yeah, you said, exactly. The, when you got that much time to prepare. Uh, let's go to Penn State next. Nine and a half, which is a little surprising for how good of a roster this team is. Yeah, and, and I don't know if I'm super, you know, more high on Penn State than, than the common – you know, common man out there, you know, I've got them, this is crazy to say, I've got them at 11 wins going over. So that means Michigan, Ohio State, and Penn State are all at 11 and one. Do I think it's it's going to be tough for that reality to happen? When I was doing this, it kind of shaked out that way. And it was weird because I was like, wait, what? But I think Penn State is going to, is going to be really good. I think their quarterback is going to be better than Sean Clifford. I can't remember his name off the top of my head. But I think he'll be an upgrade. Yes, Drew it might take some time, Drew Aller, um, to to kind of get accustomed to everything, being a full time starter. But I think he yeah. has more upside. And then running back tandem, you know, one of the best in the Big Ten, if not the best. And I think their defense is really, really good. Also, and if there's ever a year to do it, I think Penn State. I mean, they got to they got to jump on it this year. You, so you also have to add here too that that the kind of the knock under James Franklin as their offensive line was always like decent but not very like great this year their offensive line is going to be got a, really good they got a guy that's projected like top three in the yeah draft. they're and they're bringing back uh four out of the five guys and like yeah. their offensive line is going to be their strength with like you said yeah. an up, upside quarterback good running backs yeah and then combine that with strength of schedule in the big 10 being 13th i i i really do believe that they could get to 11 wins so that's kind of where i've got them Yep. I have them going over as well. Um, and I have it only one loss. Um, uh, I actually have them losing kind of funny because I have them winning at Ohio State, which who knows that will happen. I have them beating Michigan. I have them just, uh, dropping a random game at Maryland. Uh, because I really like Maryland's team this year. And I feel like like they they never beat the top three teams, but you would think that at some yeah. point they would get one of them. So why not this game? Right. Um uh, so yeah. I just have that. I think at Illinois week three is going to be tricky for them. I think they will go in and win, but I am really high on Illinois. And you have, once again, a new quarterback, hostile environment. I don't know if Illinois, but you know, Illinois is going to be a loud, you know, um, environment there because it's week three. Illinois is going to be decent this year. Good. So that's going to be a tough game for Penn state. And then, you know, they have to travel home and, and play Iowa the next week. So their first, and they play West Virginia to start the year. So their first, like, quarter of the season is actually tougher than it looks. Yeah, that's, it is. That's despite, and that's still not playing right. Ohio State, Penn, or Michigan, at Michigan State. So, yep. uh, but I still have them going over. Um, let's go to Michigan State. Their over-under is five and a half. Tough, because, you know, Michigan State's just a weird team to predict. I feel like they've always kind of been, like, really, really good. But then they've also had like these years where they're just like randomly not good, not good. I mean, I know that's a terrible way of explaining, but um, I have them going under at, at, and I have them winning five games. Um, schedule is really hard. Um, schedule is really tough. You've got, yeah. you know, obviously at Iowa, can it, you know, obviously a tough game um, late September. Um, you're going at Ohio State. Penn State is a, quote unquote home game in Detroit, which I don't know if we've explained this yet, but maybe you can. That's just a weird situation. Yeah. We talked about that back in May, actually. Oh, that okay. was one of the topics we talked about. I couldn't remember. Yeah. 
Um, and then just at Wisconsin, at Purdue, at yep. you know, and then they play. Uh, oh, they oh, actually excuse me. Not I was looking at the wrong. At Ohio say, State, yeah, Michigan at home. There you go. Um, well, their crossovers are freaking tough. At Iowa, at Minnesota, Nebraska. That's really tough. Yeah, yeah. So I've got them going under. Um, I I don't like their offense. They lost, you know, their best receiver to the transfer portal. Um, quarterback is kind of a question mark, if I'm not. Well, yeah, because they lost their quarterback as well. Yeah. Okay. So I I just could, couldn't remember off the top of my head. I just I don't I don't like the vibe around Michigan State. Yeah, I, I have them going over just for the simple fact of if they could start 3-0 and in non-conference, um, you would think that they would be able to maybe find three more wins in there. Um, I have them losing to Washington, who yeah, I think is going to be really good this year. Yeah, and that is true. Um, With Penix. Yep, and more I think about it, they probably that probably will be a loss, but I just figured I just figured eh, yeah. they're at home. Maybe, maybe, maybe get tough. them the dub, but – Right. Yeah, I don't know. This team, like it's it's hit or miss with them. I think. Mel Tucker at Big Ten Media Day said like this is the most athletic team, or he said something along those lines. But then yeah. you see like their quarterback left, their best wide receiver left. Like, I don't know. Like their front seven on defense is, is really good, but I don't know. I, I think they are at best a six win team. Uh let's go to Maryland. Seven is their over under. So you'd mentioned, and I don't know what you're going to say yet, but you mentioned you were high on Maryland. I'm a little high on Maryland as well. Um, I've got them going over. I've got them going eight wins. Um, Yeah, I'd like to see a Maryland team. I wouldn't like to see a Maryland team go nine wins, but I I just think because they're still in the East, obviously they're they're playing the the toughest teams over there. Um, I've got them at eight wins um, with losses at Ohio State. Uh, Penn State and Michigan losing to that big three. Um, I they haven't done it yet. Like you said, if there's a year to do it, it's probably this year, and it could be this year. It might be one of their better teams that they've had. Um, but I've got them going over at eight wins. I think what helps too is one of their crossovers is is Northwestern, and I think yeah. anyone who plays Northwestern that's that's should be an easy dub. Um, I have them going over. I actually have them finishing the season eight and four, but that's also. I also have them beating Penn State, which who knows if that will happen or not. Uh, but um, I think for me with with this Maryland team is defensively, for their offense has always been pretty good, especially with their quarterback. Uh, defense has always been like the thing and the reason why they just can't get over that next step. Well, this year their defense should be pretty dang good and probably maybe the best since uh, – I can't think of their head coach since he's been there. The The only thing that scares me is their O-line is completely like rebuilt. Like they are, they lost almost everybody on the offensive line. Now they did get some transfers, things like that. So, you know, maybe they'll mesh well, but that's the only thing I'm a little concerned by. But when you have, uh, what's his name? Tua's brother, Tulia or whatever his name is, uh, as quarterback, like, that's you have a lot of upside, a lot of talent right there. And if you have a really good quarterback, like you can win some games. I don't care if this supporting cast isn't as good, but the problem is, is their supporting cast is pretty good. They have really good right ride receivers. They have a good running back and their defense can just be decent. Like they're going to win a lot of games. So I like Maryland. They always, they always have good receivers. Right? They do. <laughs> yep. They do. Jay, Jay John Jones is like their main guy. And then, yeah, like their running back, Roman Hemi, Hemney, he's uh should be a good running back for them. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we won't spend much time on these two teams, but the remaining, uh, we won't even really talk about them, but Indiana three and a half. Yeah. I got, I'm going under. It's, Same. I, I, I don't think they're poised for a big season. No. And you know, they have to start Ohio state. So if that's going to be a loss, yeah. they have to play Louisville um, neutral site. Like that's a loss. Right. And then, yeah, it's tough. I, I have them going under. And then I, uh, what were you going to say? Well, I was just going to say, I have the beating Indiana State and Akron, two non-conference games and losing that's every big literally, game. Literally, yep, that's literally what I have to. Which is crazy because anything can happen, but it's just, man, I just, they're, they're not a great football team. Um, And then Rutgers, four and a half. I have them squeaking by going over with five wins. Oh, you do? Um, I do. I, you know, Rutgers is a weird team because I feel like they're like, they're not going to be good enough to really compete, but 
they're not a horrible, horrible team, uh, you know, with their head coach, which now I'm blanking out at. Um, Greg Schiano. Greg Schiano, yeah. I, you know, and – but again, I'm starting the year 3-0, and which is weird because they play Virginia Tech. But I, Virginia Tech would plays like two Big Ten teams, and I figured they might lose one of those. Um, they get Rutgers – gets them at home. So I've got them winning there, and then they play this team named Wagner, which, I mean, I would assume they would win. And then I have them beating at Indiana because I think Indiana is the worst team in the East. So I've got them at five. Five. Yeah, I have them I have them finishing four and eight, so I have them going under. All right, let's go to the Big Ten West now. We'll start with uh, – I mean, we won't do Iowa – or we will do Iowa. We won't talk because that's what we yeah. do every other time. Yeah. So Iowa at eight. I have them going over. Um, yeah, same. I got them at, at 10 wins. This is maybe my heart over my head speaking um, with a win at Wisconsin, which I, it's definitely a, a heart overhead type of pick there. But if there's a year to, to get to, to get to India, it's this year. And I think to do it, you know, you might have to get to 10 wins. So I've got him. Yeah. I think, I think you definitely have to beat our, I feel like you almost have to beat Wisconsin this year to get to Indy. Um, I have them losing at Wisconsin, but that also would mean then like I have Wisconsin losing three games and I don't know if that will happen. So hopefully you are right there. Hopefully we do win at Wisconsin. I have them going over as well. Um, and I have them finishing 10 and two. So, all right, let's get to Wisconsin now. Uh, eight and a half is there over under. This was hard because there's a lot of new changes, especially on the offensive side you know, with a new sort of air raid offense, which is weird to, to sort of say about Wisconsin. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's, just, it's weird. I don't even know. Like, does that mean that they're just – they're going to pass more than they run, even though they have one of the better running backs? Like, I don't I don't know what that means. But, you know, Luke Fickle comes in. I think it – you know, obviously, that he's, I think he's a hell of a coach. Um, but it might take some time for everything to, to work perfectly, especially in that first year. With that being said, with their – Strength of schedule being 11, uh, I have them going over with nine wins. Yeah, I have them going over as well. I mean, their crossovers this year are pretty easy. They get Rutgers at Indiana and then Ohio State at home. Like that's, I mean, yeah, you have to play Ohio State, but your other two, those are easy crossovers. Um, They have to go out to uh, Washington. They play at Washington State week two. Might be a little tricky. I mean, for them, it's probably a good thing that they're playing them and not Washington on the road, but it's still going to be a tricky game on the road. Uh, Which Washington he, State beat them last time, I think, that they last played. Last year. Yeah, I think last yeah. – yeah, they did. Yeah. That was kind of when – like that was kind of like the end of uh, yeah. their last coach. I mean, you, you could just – the writing was on the wall. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, it is going to be intriguing with this Wisconsin team. Like how are they going to look with this new air raid system? I do like their quarterback, Tanner Mordecai. I think he's a really, really good quarterback. He was uh, started out at Oklahoma uh, and then transferred to SMU, put up insane numbers there. And, and granted, it's SMU and you're. Which you're did they gonna, run that that style there? He like, well, SMU's I don't. Like an air raid type, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I mean, they pass the ball a lot. Like you go yeah. look at his numbers and you're like, holy cow. So you have him, you have Brant, Braylon Allen, you have a really good offensive line. Like they're they should be really good offensively, and then their defense should be good. Now they. Did lose uh, Jim Leonard, which is now at Illinois. Which it's like, God dang it, why is that guy? Why did he go there? But um, so losing him kind of probably sucks a little bit. Their defense might fall off a tad, but still really good. Yeah. Um. All right. Let's go to let's do let's do Illinois next. Six and a half. Six and a half. Weird number. I, you know, Illinois really good last year. Um, yep. You know, one of the top defenses in the Big Ten, if not the country. I've got them going over with eight wins. We were kind of talking about this. Am I missing something here? What am I missing with Illinois at six and a half? I I think I, that's one of the easiest overs. It is that you could that you could place a bet on right now. I I'm looking at the schedule. Yeah, they got Penn State, Wisconsin, and Iowa. Um, but it's not like a horrible schedule and. I think Illinois is a really good team and only getting better under – God, I'm forgetting every head coach's name today. Holy cow. Uh, Brett Bielma. And I just think that they're – that they'll be a, a solid team this year again. So I've got them at eight wins, going eight and four. 
um, and, and got the opening. So I actually, this is the one team I actually did bet uh, because I thought I, same with you. I'm like, this does not seem right. Six and a half for a team that's could win the big 10 West. Like they could, they could like, that game. A lot can, of people are picking them to win it by the way. Yeah, a lot of the Big Ten crew was picking Illinois. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, I'm telling you that that second to last game of the season in Kinnick might be bigger than what some people think. That Illinois game might be a huge game inside Kinnick. Could be. Um, Very well, could be. I think it. I think it really comes down to um, their quarterback play, and I think it's going to be Luke Altmeyer transfer. If if he is good, then yes, I think this team is going to be really good because you look at their team; they have a good running game with Josh McCray, uh, Isaiah Williams on the outside, really good offensive line. I mean, you're the trenches are always going to be good under Brett Bielema, uh, but good offensive line. Their, their defensive front might be one of the best in the big 10. Uh, so it, yeah, the only, the, and the only other thing alongside the quarterback is they do have to replace both corners. Obviously one of them was drafted like what pick five, um, and then the other one was uh, drafted, like I think second or third round. So you have to replace them. That might be a little tough, uh, but other than that, they are they are good. And I think Luke Altmeyer was from Ole Miss. He didn't play at Ole Miss. He was just a highly rated guy out of high school. He was a four star. So you you assume that he's going to be decent, but you obviously don't know until we start playing some football. Uh, let's get into let's do let's do Minnesota next over under seven. Oh, this was tough. I actually have them going under uh, with six God, wins. Come on, I, you were high on them last year. I was. I, I really was. Um, but they, they're they kind of a team that's hit or miss, too. Like, you know, I I don't know. It It's tough. They, they've got a really hard schedule. They do. Um, Very tough. You know, starting with Nebraska, not going to be easy. Um, I actually have them beating Nebraska. Um, but no, they, and then they at North Carolina, I mean, that's, that's tough. That's really Game tough. Day's going to going to, I think it's in North Carolina against South Carolina the first, the first week or vice versa. But, um, they're, you know, obviously, um, they're expected to be really, really good in the ACC. I think they're going to, they actually drop that game. Um, and obviously, you know, they play all the big dogs, Ohio state, Michigan, um, Wisconsin. that's a tough so crossover. I, it is having to play. Really I mean, I, I guess I guess that's what we had we had to do last year: play Michigan and Ohio State. Yeah, and they and Michigan yeah. State. Damn. Yeah, I listen. I think it's going to be tough. Um, and so at I Iowa, six wins going under. So I'm despite how hard their schedule is, I I just I think seven is kind of like right on the dot. Uh, but if I yeah, had I do too. If yeah. I had a pick. I would just say uh, I'm just gonna go over, uh, just because like what PJ Fleck has built there, um, they're just a very consistent pro- program. I love their wide receivers. They might have one of the best wide receiving cores in the in the Big Ten. Obviously, you have Ohio State up there, like way ahead of everybody. But then Minnesota is right up there. Um, running back though, they did lose. I can't think of his Ibrahim. name. Yep, Ibrahim. Ibrahim. Really good running back. They got Sean Taylor from Western Michigan. The only reason I do that is because I was doing some uh, research on Western Michigan uh, for our schedule, and they were saying how good this Sean Taylor was and that he transferred to Minnesota. And then their other really good wide receiver also transferred to Minnesota. So I was like, damn, Western Michigan's going to suck this year when we play them. They're losing all their good say, players. Uh, they all mean went, really good things for Iowa. Yeah, yeah they all they all left to go to Minnesota. Uh, but their offensive line, they are replacing three guys in the interior, both guards and the center, which might spell some trouble. Center is really good last year. Yep. Um, secondary is a little iffy. They're, they're, some of their corners went in the transfer portal. But I don't know. I, I, I like the team collectively. I think, like I said, P.J. Fleck has built a consistent program up there, and uh, they're always going to win a decent amount of games every year. They're never going to – I don't know. It's like weird. Like it's, It just seems like they're never going to – quite make it but like they're always going to be kind of in the running and i do i agree i have them beating nebraska to start the year that thursday night football game which i'm so pumped for uh i that's one of my favorite nights of the year because we don't play and it's just like you know like inside you like okay we only have like 
two more days until Iowa football and college football, like officially begins that night. It's like one of my favorite nights of the year. Yeah, it always seems like, uh, Minnesota plays that Thursday. They do. They played like Ohio state. Remember that? Yep. It's, it's like for the season. It's like Michigan state yeah. playing on, on the opening on Friday. Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, let's go to Nebraska next at six over under six. I think as painful as this is for me to say, um, being, being a Hawkeye fan that I am, I think that they're going to go over and get to seven wins this year. Um, just kind of look at their schedule. Um, I think they dropped the first game at Minnesota. They bounced back and they beat Colorado, um, which that'll be a, that'll be a big time game. Um, yeah, it will be. I think Colorado, obviously a lot of hype surrounding them and their program with prime now coach prime. So, um, but I, I just think under Matt rule, you know, I think he's a really good coach, you know, kind of proven winner wherever he's gone, except probably at the Panthers, not a, not a great, great stint in the NFL, but, you know, he's turned, turned some programs around um, in college. And, you know, I think, I think he'll unfortunately build a decent culture there with Nebraska. I think they'll, they've got some, transfers uh quarterback from georgia tech who i think could be could be pretty good for them um you know their schedule isn't horrible uh they're like an eight on a uh, strength of schedule in the big 10 so i got them going at seven wins so the only thing i have with nebraska and i actually have them going which i don't know if this is fair or not but i have them just washing at six i think six is like the perfect number for them because i think they're either going to go like Five and seven. I, or six no, and six. I, I, that's why I was like, this is tough, but yeah. Um, I asked a Nebraska fan this week. Uh, obviously, I live in Lincoln, so I have to deal with them, unfortunately. Uh, I asked one sure. of them, I was like, I was like, how is this Jeff Sims going to be? And he was like, oh, he's going to, you know, so, you know, just a typical Nebraska fan. And I just said, well, like, is he going to be that much better than Casey Thompson? Cause I thought Casey Thompson, despite all the drama last year and, you know, Scott Frost getting fired and just seemed like the season was, I mean, he had a pretty good year. I, I so like, is, is this guy going to be that much better than him? And like, I went back and like looked at this Jeff Sims, like stats and granted he played at Georgia tech and Georgia tech is horrible, but his stats weren't that great. And I was just thinking, I'm like, he's going to have to go up against big 10 defenses compared to like some of the teams in the ACC. Now, obviously you have some of them that are pretty good. You know, you have your Florida States, your Clemson's, but then you also have some, some teams in the ACC or that are, very bad. So I don't know. Like, I think he's going to be decent for them. Like he's a dual threat quarterback, but is he that much better than Casey Thompson? Like, that's the only thing that I would, I would like to question. Yeah, and that's, that's why I'm fair so, argument. so excited for that Thursday night game. Cause it, it's, I'm just intrigued to see how Nebraska looks under Matt rule. Um, well, and well, it, yeah. And if they beat Minnesota, I mean, they're looking at potentially going four and to start the season. Yeah, I really no. I mean, their non conference is not tough. Be, at Colorado will be a tough game. It will be at Colorado. That's just going to be a tough environment. But, yep. you know, they have a real shot at getting to 4 and 0. And then, you know, the over is looking pretty good at that point. But, All, but yeah, that's going to be a huge game. Also, not talked about, but their new defensive coordinator, um, their, their new scheme is a 3 3 5, which in the Big Ten, will that work? I don't know. Iowa State does it, but it's also the Big 12. A lot more passing. So will the three three five work in the Big Ten? So that's you know, that might take a little adjusting. That might take a year or two to really get the guys in this new scheme. So that's another thing to kind of watch out for that I don't think many people are talking about. But yeah, I'm really, really pumped for that for that Thursday night game because I'm intrigued to see this Nebraska team. Um let's do Purdue or Northwestern. I think say, fair to say both of us went under. We I don't think we didn't even talk about that. All right. I mean, I have them beating Under. UTEP and Howard, and they might not even beat UTEP at home. So, I saw multiple sites that are picking UTEP at this yeah. point, which I'm not shocked at either. So, yes. I mean, I, I just don't see with all the drama, I, with with all the distractions, how this team can win more than like one or two games. I just, I don't know. I don't. I, I they have, I, and they and they didn't win when they didn't have the distractions. So, how are they going to get better? Right? Yeah. Like exactly. I don't see it. Uh, let's just do Purdue quick, actually. Uh, per, uh, Purdue five and a half. Tough. This is again, I was right on that line of like, man, do they get to five? Do they get to the six wins or do they 
they go under the reason. So I've got them under with five games. They have the toughest, you know, strength of schedule in the Big Ten. Their, their schedule is absolutely brutal. Um, yep. At Virginia Tech, it, you know, second game of the season, you know, tough, That's tough. environment. You, you know, it's no Blacksburg is known as one of the toughest places to play. Um, you get, you could bounce back with Syracuse to follow up that game, which you know, it, unfamiliar opponent could be could be trouble. I have them them beating Syracuse, but again, tough schedule. And then this four game stretch, or well, six game stretch, but I'm I'm gonna go four: Wisconsin, Illinois, at home, at Iowa, and then Ohio State. Yeah, it's tough. That's brutal. up by a bye, and then at Nebraska, at Michigan. Yeah, it, the schedule is insane. So I've got them going under. I, I don't think they're going to be a horrible team. I just think their schedule is so hard that it's just going to be tough to get get to six. Yep. I like their quarterback, Hudson Card. I like their new head coach, yeah, the I guy from good. Illinois. But, yeah, yeah, you're exactly right. That schedule is brutal. Their non-conference is brutal. At Iowa, they don't at get any, Michigan, they don't really get any breaks. No, besides Northwestern at the end of the year. So I'm year. gonna go. I'm gonna go under simply for that reason. If if their schedule was easier, I think they're not gonna be bad this year. Their new head coach, and like I said, I I really like Hudson Carr. Now it's gonna be interesting to see. They always have good wide receivers. It'll be interesting to see how that plays out this year. They lost obviously Charlie Jones and and things yeah. like that. So, uh, but yeah. So with it being all said, then you have then get or yeah you have. Who was coming out of the Big Ten East, son? So out of the East, um, well, so I've got Ohio State, Penn State, and Michigan all finishing 11-1. and one. And the way it shakes out, me and you kind of crunch the numbers. And, you know, maybe I'll have you explain it more than me because I, I don't even understand it. But basically, you go down to a tiebreaker. You go to a tiebreaker, which you end up going to like a fifth tiebreaker to determine who's actually the winner. And it ends up being Ohio State. Um, due to the non-divisional record of their opponents. Yeah. It's, it's insane. It's a weird, some weird like tiebreaker, but I have Ohio state really quick losing at Michigan, Michigan losing at Penn state and then Penn state losing at Ohio. It's state. like so a round Robin. Each other. It's a round Robin. They all beat each other. So it's this weird tiebreaker that ends up being Ohio state, then Penn state, then Michigan which is super weird because I honestly thought I'd have Michigan um, finishing the year. And if the all year, if if all three finish 11-1, you could see for the first time ever three teams in the playoffs. Now, it probably won't happen, but if that did happen, how can you leave those three teams out? If, I don't think and, you can. Again, this is all well, – well, this is all what if. And yeah, exactly. obviously it's, it's going to be – it's going to be very hard for that this, – this scenario to probably happen. But like you said – if all three teams finish 11 and one and all those games are pretty close games, it, you could have the argument that they all deserve to be in. Now, will they all three be in? Probably not because that's yeah. not the way that the college football committee wants it to happen. It's three big 10 teams in there, but you have a legitimate argument. Yep, exactly. And so yeah, the West real quick, the West, I'll just, I'll, I'll finish up here. Then you, I'll have you go. Um, the West, I've got Iowa 10 and two. I just think, you know, if you're going to get to Indy, you got to get to 10 wins and probably beating Wisconsin, as I mentioned, um, unless like you have it where Wisconsin actually loses three games. Um, again, might be a little my heart over my head on it, but I just feel like if there's a year to do it, it's got to be this year. Um, 10 and two, um, followed up by Wisconsin at nine and three and then Illinois eight and four uh, as a top three. Um. Yeah, that's going to be so interesting. And yeah, looking at yours at the Big Ten East, yeah, it it did fifth tiebreaker, which was non divisional, which that's just crazy that it, it might come down I, to that. I don't it, like. I'm not even going to get into it and explain it because it's so hard. But like, you know, if, if everyone's listening or watching, you can kind of look it up yourself. It's it's this weird tiebreaker, and yeah, if that happens, I mean, man, what a crazy scenario. Yep. Uh, for me, I have Penn State, and it for me it was a lot easier than yours because it came down to Penn State, Michigan, both being eleven to one. But it was easy because Penn State beat beats them, so they outright uh, winner to go to Indy. And then on the Big Ten West, I have Iowa. Um, hopefully, both both of us aren't just fanboys. Hopefully, Iowa actually does it. I think we both had them going last year. I definitely did. I don't know about you. 
Uh, and that obviously clearly did not happen. I so. think I had Wisconsin. But I did you? Yeah, I couldn't remember. I, I think, but I don't quote me on that. And just, I, I, again, I, I'm probably a homer. I get it. I'm not. I'm not up here trying to like, you know, say that I'm not because I am. But I just obviously we, you know, this is an Iowa podcast, and I, there's a lot of optimism coming from me and you. Um, you know, if we can get my thing is if we can get to eight wins last year with how bad our offense was, if we're just a little bit better, I, I don't see it being impossible to get to 10 wins. I don't. Yep. Exactly. So, um, well, we, we had some other topics in mind that we're going to talk about tonight, but I think we're going to say that for next week because we are already closing in on an hour, which I had a feeling it was going to happen because when we started talking big 10, it was like, it, there's a lot of stuff to talk about. So uh, we will leave it there. We will be back again though. Next week. Like I said, the topics in mind, we were going to get into gambling and then also also conference realignment. But the, all those all those topics are going to be here with us next week, especially the realignment. Hell, by next week, there's probably going to be more information out. I would say by this weekend, we're going to see some teams jump in. So it might be better to wait until next week to really talk about that. Yeah, and then if you wanted to kind of – I mean, we don't have to do it today, but if you want to talk about maybe like a future um, sort of – uh, segment that we've wanted oh. to try to introduce uh, yep. at some point. So starting next week, we're going to do it tonight, but starting next week, uh, it's just called like Hawk Talk News Flash. And what we'll do is throughout the, it just seems like throughout the week, I was thinking about this yesterday or a couple of days ago when I was driving for work. Um, it seems like throughout the week, there's always like small little news things that pop up and it's things that like you don't really need to talk about, but it's kind of like, you know, interesting, kind of wanted to share it. And so I just thought like, why not do like a little segment where we spend like two minutes, like PDI, uh, where uh, all we do spend two minutes, talk about that, talk about that specific article. So like, for example, uh, one of the things that we were gonna talk about this week was like swarm beer and about all the money that they have, they have gotten off of uh, the swarm beer. And so that's like a topic. It's not a big deal. It's not a big news article, but enough to talk about it so let's spend two minutes and let's right. move on to the next topic and so starting next week we'll do that uh and we'll do maybe three or four we'll find three or four small to relatively moderate news things and we will just spend two minutes and and then we'll call it good so i'm excited for that yeah i think it'll be a, a cool a cool top or a cool segment to kind of introduce and like you said it's a it's a lot of other stuff not just specifically Iowa um it could be you know other th- college football news yep. or uh, just other things associated with Iowa like you said non-football related where it's like the swarm beer or you know other things like that so and then also like at some point I'm sure we'll get back to doing you know the mailbag where we have you know the listeners yes. send us in your questions um, we love trying to you know answer to you guys and having um, I... our thoughts and and feedback obviously um on just your guys's questions, which we yep. love doing too. I forgot about that that we did that last year, and it was it made yeah. it it made it fun. It was cool. So we'll yeah. definitely do that, and and probably we'll probably start getting that more as when the season kind of gets underway. But yeah. Uh, yeah, once we start getting some questions, uh, we will definitely start up mailbag, and maybe um, right away I might kind of gather a decent or some, and then yeah. uh, wait for a wait few weeks, kinda, and then and then yeah. do it. Yeah. Got to get Colby on the episode at least once too this off season before we start uh, Man, getting into this season. Lot, lot to look forward to, that's for sure. It, it do, yeah, and I don't have the calendar in front of me because I'm really bad at dates and stuff, but I think after tonight or after this week, I think four more episodes until the first game, I'm almost confident. Yep, yep. Uh, is it? Okay. Yep. I, yeah, like I, said, I, don't uh, have I believe so. So, that's yeah. That's math is wrong, which Man, could be, it, but I'm it's, pretty sure it's four. Yep, so um, – Next week, we're also going to do our schedule difficulty, one of my favorite topics from last year, where we rank the schedule 12 to 1, 12 being the easiest game, 1 being the hardest game. We'll do that next week and really get really dive deep into Iowa schedule, some of the things that I kind of found and um, different yeah. things like that. So we'll do that next week along with the new segment, Hawk Talk News Flash, and then conference realignment because it's going to be a big deal. And I think a lot of stuff is going to play out this next couple of days. So, all right, man. Well, we're going to sign off. I'm going to go watch the Hall of Fame game as it just got uh, underway. Or at least watch maybe the first quarter. I probably won't watch it all, but 
Football yeah. is football. It is back. Let's go. So, all right, guys. Have a good night. Thank you guys all for listening. Uh, and go Hawks. <laughs>